Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod, the Tetrarch, heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Kohalith. That's a big funny word, isn't it? Kohalith. You know, it just really means the preacher. The guy who's preaching. And he's kind of having a bad day. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. You know what it means to be vain? If you're, if you're filled with vanity, you're only stuck on yourself. There's also this guy in Greek mythology called Narcissus. And he was this guy who was walking around one day and he bent down and he looked in the water and he saw his own reflection. And he said, wow, I am beautiful. In fact, he was so overcome by his beauty that he was stuck there for the rest of his life. He couldn't take his eyes off himself. That's what vanity is. We're stuck on ourselves. And Jesus invites us to think about others. He invites us to care about others. And what do you think is going to happen if you're a person who thinks more about your friend than yourself? What do you think your friend's going to think about you? You think they're going to like you? You bet they are. Because if he's a good friend or she's a good friend, she's going to think more about you than herself. You see, this is the essence of Christianity. Jesus told us two things to help us get through life. One is love God. And the other is love your neighbor as yourself. So in other words, just try and treat each other as you would like to be treated. Would you like someone to lie to you? No. So don't lie to them. Would you want someone to break your stuff? Then bro don't break their stuff. Would you want someone to steal your stuff? Then don't steal anybody's stuff. It's really, really easy. But the devil tries to trick us. He tries to think that I can make an excuse to take things if I want them. But if we think like that, We've been deceived. The real problem in our world today is people don't even, hard as this is to believe, because they don't think very deeply, they don't believe in God. And so the thing is, Kohalath in this first reading, he's thinking, well, nothing changes, everything's the same, what difference does it make? I'm going to die, there's going to be people take over my stuff. He didn't understand at this point in the story. At the end of this book, he basically says, but God has it. God knows. There must be meaning to all this. Because in about 4 billion years, the sun's going to burn out. Did you know that? The sun is a big fireball, and its fuel is hydrogen. And that hydrogen is going to run out someday in about 4 billion years. And so God created us to be eternal. So hopefully in 4 billion years, we can all get together in heaven. If we trust God and accept his ways and don't reject him, we'll be in heaven. 
we can all get around and say, hey, let's go watch the sun burn out today. Won't that be cool? Because what happens in our world, when you don't believe in God, you think you are God. And you think your ways are more important than anybody else. And so you can do whatever you want. And that's why we see so many difficulties and problems in our world today. But we can make a difference. Today, there's a priest, John Ricardo, who started this movement many, many months ago to invite us to pray and fast today and to make little sacrifices today to make what we call reparation for sin. Reparation, that's just a big word that means repair. If somebody, like, hurts you, even by accident, they don't really mean to hurt you, you're still hurt, that person can come up and say, I'm sorry. And even though that person may not have meant to hurt you, they can still come up and say, I'm sorry. And that will make you feel a little better. And so what we need to do today is just we say sorry to God for the things that we don't even know we've done that hurt him or hurt our brothers and sisters. And so... I would encourage you, if you're healthy and it's not too big of a deal and you can do it, give up something today. Maybe food. Maybe don't play any video games tonight and just say, I'm going to offer this up for Jesus. I'm going to try and, and study this much harder tonight because our world needs prayers, guys. And you know what's cool about the prayers of children? You guys are really innocent. And, and your prayers are really powerful. So just ask the Lord. The, the two intentions for this day of fasting is to pray for healing for our country and also to pray that our relationship with Jesus is better. Don't worry about your brothers and sisters' relationship. Just ask Jesus to help you have a better relationship with him, to know him, to love him, to serve him. And if you do that, you're going to be really happy now and forever, for all eternity. It's really good news because we never run out of fuel because God made us eternal. We never die in a supernatural way. Yes, we come to an earthly end in our life, but that's not our end because our soul lives forever. And at the end of time, when our bodies will be raised from the dead, we get our bodies back. And we're with God for all eternity with the same kind of body Jesus has. A glorified body that will reveal his presence and goodness and truth for all eternity. That's our faith. Pray that we can be that person who helps others know Jesus. I like this little image. We need to be like the thermostat in a room and not the temperature. If somebody's really angry, it's really easy to be angry back. So you let, if the temperature's hot and people are really angry, it's really easy to get angry all around them. We call that mob rule. But as Christians, we need to be the thermostat. We need to be that person who says, why are you angry? Let's ask the Lord to help us fix this. And you can bring down the temperature in the room, but you need virtue. Virtue is just good habits. The bad habits are called vices. If we're filled with virtue, we are virtuous. But if we're filled with bad habits, if we're filled with the vices, we become vicious. And what's sad in our streets today, in many places, we see a lot of viciousness. We need to pray for those people who are doing these bad things because they've been deceived by the devil and they're filled with hatred. Let us pray that we can win over their hearts with love, with compassion, with the rule of law that society can be protected with them in a safe and, and good way, and that we 
are instrumental in helping the world be a better place by our love for God and our love for each other. And it's pretty simple, guys. When you get big and you go to college, there's going to be a lot of people trying to tell you that God doesn't exist. All you need to say is, who started the universe? Who caused the Big Bang? And they won't have an answer. And you can say, I know. God did it. Help us be those people who help the world think. So oftentimes when people go to school, a lot of the teachers, I'm not saying here, but I'm saying in universities and colleges, they teach you what to think. They don't teach you how to think. And if you use your brain well, you're going to come to know Jesus and God in a beautiful way. So on this day, we pray for healing for our country and also this better relationship for Jesus. And try and do something today. Try and give up something today to help the world be a better place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Understand that we bring our prayers and intercession before the Lord. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self interest. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have left before us, the intention of this Mass, I'm sorry, for Dolores. Sorry, it's for Dolores Pajakowski, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. For the end of this wretched pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all our first responders, those people, nurses, doctors, police officers, all those people in our streets who strive to bring health and order to our society, that even in the face of hatred and, and darkness and misunderstanding, that they don't lose heart, that they're emboldened and they know that God loves them, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered, both in the church and outside of ranks, and those who are responsible for it lose their power or be converted, so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that we have leaders that discourage violence. Uh, 40 days, we have an election. Just let us pray that we get leaders that discourage violence, respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.